everyone and welcome to chapter 10 infectious diseases in this chapter we'll be first defining what it means by infectious disease what are pathogens and what are different types of pathogens now after that we're going to be learning about five different diseases um, specifically cholera malaria hiv aids and tuberculosis and a little bit just touching on smallpox because it's going to be a very important example when it comes to vaccination in the next chapter and then last but not least we'll be covering antibiotics and antibiotic resistance right at the end of this chapter okay let's start this chapter off with defining some terms what is a disease? What is the definition exactly? This might seem a little bit simple and dumb, but hey, let's define it. Disease is ill health or sickness that can cause reduce effectiveness of functions. This could be physical, mental, social problems, right? It could be um, physical, mental, social symptoms. Now, so mental health illnesses like depression is considered a disease at some point that because it causes reduced effectiveness of mental or social functions. So it's considered ill health or sickness. So yeah, that's how you define disease. Now, how about an infectious disease? What is an infectious disease? So all infectious diseases are infectious because they are caused by pathogen and infectious is really uh, carrying the meaning of can be passed from one organism to another meaning this disease is communicable and transmissible these are all terms to just describe the word infectious yeah so yeah disease that is infectious is always caused by a pathogen and can be passed by this range of methods right so different disease can be passed in different ways it could be direct contact it could be exchange of fluids um, during sexual intercourse it could be contamination of food and drink it could be airborne it could be uh, through a vector and i think this is trying to tell you that the vector is birds in this case there are also other types of ways that it can transmit and we'll cover some of them later yeah so yeah that's infectious diseases now speaking of diseases caused by pathogens what exactly are pathogens now all pathogens are parasites and they are all disease causing <clears throat> and it's not just bacteria or virus it's just a general term for microorganisms that cause disease so pathogens are disease causing microorganisms which can be prokaryotes or eukaryotes so there are a few types here bacteria virus protoctis and fungi bacteria here you should know by now is a prokaryote virus is not considered a living thing right protoctis are actually single cell eukaryotes and fungi is also considered a eukaryote so whatever you learn in chapter one about prokaryotes and eukaryotes you should be applying it here when we're talking about infectious diseases but let's talk about them in general first what do they all do so pathogens which are parasitic disease causing microorganisms are usually go through this kind of general pathway <clears throat> they all gain entry to the host at some point colonize host tissues and maybe multiply a lot and then it could maybe damage the host tissues and take up space and maybe in some form resist the host defenses so if we want to reduce the spread of an infectious disease or say um, kill the pathogen then we need to find a way to break this disease transmission cycle so break the disease transmission cycle how well so maybe stop it from multiplying maybe use a drug or a prevention method maybe stop it from damaging host tissues in some form or even stop it from passing on so stopping any one of these steps right or preventing it from passing on would be breaking the cycle 
and therefore the disease will stop spreading. Yeah. So back to pathogens. What are pathogens again? Parasitic disease causing microorganisms, which could be prokaryotes or eukaryotes. And these are different types we kind of uh, talked about just now as well. This here is a virus and it's quite a nice picture already. Okay, this here is a bacteria, which is a prokaryote. Now, Protoctis, just in case you don't know what I'm talking about, they are unicellular eukaryotes. And you actually know a few already. These are some examples of protists. They're not, they don't cause disease, um, but these are some examples. Amoeba, Chlamydomonas, sound familiar? Paramecium, Euglena. These uh, are unicellular eukaryotes because they have a nucleus and they have like animal cell-like structures. But they are not animal cells. They are not plant cells. They are not fungi. They are just protists or protoctis. It's their own category. Okay, so virus, bacteria, protists. What else? Fungi. Fungi are considered eukaryotes as well. And I think when you think of fungi, you often think of mushrooms um, and stuff. But they are also... Um, disease-causing fungus so that can grow on your skin, most likely. Uh, we're not going to talk about a lot of fungi here, but we're going to do a little recap on viruses and bacteria, slight small recap, and also um, later on talk a lot more about an example of a protist. So let's do a little recap first. Recap of viruses. Viruses are very tiny, and it's a very simple structure. It's a non-cellular structure, no plasma membrane, no cytoplasm, no ribosomes, no organelles. They only have three things, three layers from the innermost thing. The innermost thing is an RNA or DNA, some form of nucleic acid. It's surrounded by a protein coat, which is called a capsid, which is then surrounded by a lipid envelope, which may have proteins on it. And this spikes here shown um, could be, you know, viral proteins. Um, some proteins that you may know or heard of a little bit is hemagglutinin and neuraminidase. Scratch that, neuraminidase. Uh, and when you talk about influenza proteins, okay, when you talk about influenza, it's the name like H1N1, right? H here is actually referring to hemagglutinin. And here it's referring to neuraminidase. Now you know. So yeah, these are proteins that may be present on a virus. Okay, not necessarily, but these are some examples. Yeah, but basically three simple things. DNA RNA, capsid, and then lipid envelope on the outside. Okay, now how do they reproduce? How do they function? Now, they can only reproduce by infecting a living cell. And we can see here how the virus binds, incorporates the viral DNA or RNA into the cell, sometimes even incorporating it into your DNA randomly, and then using your cell to produce uh, proteins. So use the whole cell's ribosomes, ER, Golgi, right? all of these organelles in order to produce its own proteins who produce more viruses as a result. So this is one of the reasons why it's considered a non-cellular thing. And that's because it has to rely on the host cell in order for it to replicate. It cannot replicate on its own. It has to rely on your cell to replicate. So that's a little recap of viruses. I know it went really fast. We already covered it in chapter one though, so go back and look for more detail. Let's talk about bacteria. Bacteria is a typical example of a prokaryote we're looking at. Uh, and what bacteria do not have is membrane-bound organelles. It also does not have a nucleus. DNA just lies through your cytoplasm in what we call the nucleoid region. Now, all bacteria have a peptidoglycan cell wall, which is like the distinctive feature, 70S ribosome, circular DNA, uh, the large DNA, the main chromosome of the bacteria, is circular. The plasmids, which are small circular DNA, are also well circular. So 
all the DNA in, in the bacteria is pretty much circular. DNA is naked. Doesn't mean that it's not associated with any proteins at all. It's not associated with histone proteins. I should have added that there. So yeah, those are the simply distinctive features of bacteria. And now that you have a little recap of what's going on, I think you can look at this picture and kind of guess whether it's a bacteria or virus or a protoctus from what we have talked about. Ready? You have kind of looked at it. Can you guess now? All right, so this one is quite typical rod-shaped bacteria. We call it rod-shaped or comma-shaped since it has a tail. Um, there's a flagella here. This too looks definitely like a typical bacteria. How about viruses? Which ones of these are viruses? Now, just on a glance, and I think from many viruses images, you know, throughout the internet nowadays, right, you know that the viruses kind of look like a ball with spikes on the top. And yep, this is a virus, this is a virus, this is also a virus. And again, very basic structure, DNA and RNA in the middle, surrounded by the capsid, and then surrounded by the lipid envelope. And what remains, which looks like a little worm, is actually a unicellular eukaryote called a protoctus. So eliminate the rest, and you know that this one is protoctus, and this actually caused malaria. And we're going to talk about that in a second. Now this is the list of causative agents you need to know. Now causative agent is like what causes the disease, and that's just a fancy way to say pathogen in this case. So these are the list of diseases we need to know. Cholera is caused by a bacteria called Vibrio cholerae. Now I realize that the scientific names right, are in italics. Malaria is caused by protoctus that you saw just now, this fella here. That, um, there are four different species actually, four different plasmodium species, plasmodium falciparum, plasmodium malaria, plasmodium vivax, plasmodium oval. HIV AIDS is caused by a virus, more specifically a retrovirus. We'll tell you what it means later on. Um, and this virus is called a human immunodeficiency virus. So HIV stands for this. Tuberculosis is caused by a bacteria called Mycobacterium tuberculosis. However, there's another species that spreads slightly differently called Mycobacterium bovis. And last but not least, we have smallpox, which is caused by a virus. And that virus name is called variola. This is the name of the genus. Right. That's okay. Just refer it to refer to it as the variola virus. So yeah, this is a list of um Causative agents, you need to know, commit this to memory, you will not go wrong. Now, before we move on to describing each of these different diseases, you need to know, we need to learn some terminology to know how to describe the distribution of the disease. Now, endemic, what does it mean by endemic? When we say that the disease is, an, in, um, is endemic in that location, right? Or for example, malaria is endemic in Africa. This means that disease exists permanently in that particular region or population. Epidemic. What does it mean by epidemic? This means that there is a sudden outbreak of a disease that is spreading really quickly and attacking many people in Malaysia. So SARS had a small epidemic in Malaysia. There was a point of time that we were all very scared of SARS. Just a little peak, and then it kind of died off. So it was well contained that time. Now, the worst of this is a pandemic, when an epidemic spreads throughout the world. For example, HIV AIDS, <clears throat> once upon a time, is considered a worldwide pandemic. And I should really change this <clears throat> and update it to the current times and say that COVID-19 is a worldwide pandemic. It's affecting everyone throughout the world. However, <clears throat> Speaking of COVID-19, um, a lot of countries are starting to get vaccinated, 
I get it, populations vaccinated and starting to not count the numbers so often anymore and starting to treat COVID-19 as an endemic instead of a pandemic, which means maybe as a society, we have accepted that we will have low numbers of COVID-19 all year round, all the time in worldwide. So it's maybe it's an endemic in that region population. So yeah, these are ways, these are this terminology to describe the distribution of disease. Um, and you will see these words pop along when you are doing questions and reading slides and reading notes as well. And yeah, that's kind of it for this video. We have established the definitions, the types of pathogens, the terminology. In the next few videos, we're going to cover one disease per video. I hope it will be helpful. See you next video. Bye-bye.